All right, welcome back GIS class. Today, I'm going to take you on a snipe hunt. We're going to make a couple of assumptions here about snipe where <laughs> we're going to assume that these fictitious birds live and breed at elevations below 1800 meters. They like to hang out in pasture grasses and crops. They're sensitive to soil composition and they're shy, elusive birds. So we're going to start with a couple of pieces of information that's readily down, downloadable and we're going to walk through these couple of different assumptions about snipe and figure out where we could go to go snipe hunting. So the first thing I want to do is grab the files that I gave you today in the snipe hunt geodatabase. We're looking at uh, digital elevation model, cadastral data for the approximately the Gallatin Valley, highways and land use in, in the Gallatin area. I want to set up my geoprocessing environments right now to only put all of my files in that Snipe Hunt geodatabase. So go up to geoprocessing, set up your environments, and let's go into the workspace. I'm going to set my workspace to the Snipe Hunt geodatabase. And we're going to make sure everything goes into that Snipe Hunt geodatabase. I'm going to set that as my current and my scratch workspace. I'm not going to worry about my output ex coordinates or processing extent this time, but I just want to save myself the time telling the computer every time I run a tool where I want my files to go. I say, okay, we've set our workspace. Now I want to bring my geology into the map. So we're going to start with looking at soil composition. We have a geology map here. I'm going to turn the symbology into looking at unique symbols, unique colors for the different symbols. We're going by MBMG code. This is how the geologic units are coded. So I'm just going to add all of those values. We're making the assumption here that quaternary, tertiary, and Archean bedrock are the three best types of um, geologic formation that will create the soils that are ideal for snipe. So looking at the codes, anything that starts with a Q is quaternary, anything that starts with a T is tertiary, and anything that starts with an X is archaea. So I want to first sort my geology to remove anything that doesn't meet the Q, T, or X geologic code. Now this is a shape file, so the easiest way to do this is to turn on editor and then go into the attribute table and we're going to select by attributes anything that starts with Q, T, or X. So what we want to do, what the, the code we want to write here is we want to say MBMG code like open quotation, I'll put a space in there, open quotation, single quotation, Q capitalized with the percentage sign and then close quotation. And because we're looking for three different units here, we're going to use the OR sub or the, the OR Boolean operator to combine these queries. So we're going to use OR because that's saying it can meet the Q or the T or the X. So I'm going to copy this query because I want to write it three times and just paste that. So it says MBMG code like Q or MBMG code like T. I'm going to set that T where the Q was or again MBMG code like X. Now each one of those starts with a single open quotation, has the capitalized letter, and then a percentage after it and the closed quotation. Get rid of that last or if you're copying it like I am. And you can hit apply. That's going to select 755 of the 1,198 geologic units. Say OK. And what we want to do here is we want to remove, since editor is on, we have the ability to delete anything that's selected. We want to just switch that selection and then delete anything that doesn't meet those 755. 
Now that's all I want to do. I'm going to close select by attributes and save my edits by stopping edit and saying, yes, I want to save my edits. So now if I refresh my screen, I'm only showing Q, X, and T geologic classes. We don't need that long list over there. Okay, we're not done with the geology, but we don't want to work in shapefiles. We're interested in working with rasters today because we're going to do some matrix math. I'm going to explain real quickly what the intended goal is here. The idea is because rasters are essentially matrices with each cell including a single piece of information, we're going to reclassify all of our rasters today to do matrix math and say anything that meets the criteria is a zero, anything that doesn't meet the criteria is a one or two or three or something to that effect. We'll get into the, the numbering scheme, but what we wanna do is anything that doesn't meet the criteria is set to zero so that when we multiply out, we end up removing any areas at all that don't fit one of the criteria that we need to meet. So we're gonna set this up. From now on, all of our matrices are gonna be set up or all of our rasters are gonna be set up with the goal of multiplying them together at the end. So if you're not familiar with matrix math, um, well, hopefully you are. Um, the idea is that each cell has an individual value and you basically multiply those together to create an end matrix that has a single value for each of each of the individual cells. So we're going to take this geology shapefile and turn it into a raster so that we can do this raster math. We want to convert this under conversion tools in Arc Toolbox. We're going from a raster, I'm sorry, we're going to a raster from a polygon. So polygon to raster is your tool. Your input features is geology. We want to set our value field here to that MBMG code. That's what we're interested in. So the code is what we want to take into the raster. So notice because I set my environmental settings, it's going into my Snipe Hunt Geo database. But I'm going to rename this to geology. Q, T, X. All right, my cell assignment type, I'm going to set this to maximum area, and I'll show you why. This is how your shapefiles are going to end up landing on that matrix. Cell center, if the center of the cell happens to fall within a polygon, that's going to be applied to that polygon. The maximum area, or the area of the um, shape that falls over the largest part of the cell is going to be assigned by maximum area. And maximum combined area effectively combines the two that happen to overlap a cell if they're the same. So if you have your help menu open when you open this tool, you can read about what these are. Our priority field overwrites our value field if we set something, it will say, we choose something from the, the list of items in the attribute table and we say we want that to override the MBMG code. In this case, we don't wanna do that. We're gonna leave priority fields set to none. We wanna set our cell size to 30. GIS is great at doing this matrix math, but it needs the cells to be the same size. We're using a 30 meter DEM later on in this lesson, so let's stick with the 30 meter cell size. And say OK and run that polygon to raster tool. OK, there we go. So now I'm done with the original geologic file. I'm going to remove that from my map because we're about to create a whole bunch of different files. And as we go, just to keep from getting confused, I'm going to remove files as we're done with them. So now we've got the geologic raster that's only quaternary tertiary and Archean soil types. The next thing we want to do, because quaternary tertiary and Archean have so many different codes in here, we want to reclassify this raster so that it makes more sense and so that we're using numbers instead of letters to do this matrix math. So now make sure we're going to go back into spatial analyst like we used last class. 
make sure your spatial analyst extension is turned on. If it's not, go up to customize, extensions, and just make sure that spatial analyst extension is checked. So in Arc Toolbox, we're gonna scroll down to spatial analyst near the bottom, expand that, and we wanna reclassify this raster. So we'll go into this reclass toolbox and use the tool reclassify. Your input raster should be the one you just created, the QTX geology. Now notice it's picking up the value as the reclassification field. It's looking at the values, the old values, and it's trying to reclassify them as new values. All it's doing is bumping them up one number. That's not what we wanna reclassify. We wanna reclassify all the MVMG code as the reclass field. So now our old values are the codes that start with Q, T, and X. And our new values are one through, one through 36. So this is a little bit clunky, bear with me. But what we wanna do, is we wanna say that supposedly quaternary is the best type of sediment for these birds. So we're gonna set that at the highest value. We'll say anything that starts with Q is a value two. Anything that starts with T is a slightly less, um, less ideal situation. So we'll call that one. And anything that starts with X is going to be classified as zero. So we're actually kind of taking that one out of the running. So let's do this. Let's run through this list of values. Assign your new values. Anything that starts with a Q is two. Anything that starts with a T is one. Anything that starts with an X is zero. So just run through your list here. It should just take a moment. But again, our end goal here is matrix math. So what we're doing is setting these values in a way that prioritizes or puts a higher number on the more ideal habitat. So when we get down to it, anything that two is multiplied by is going to be a higher number. And anything that's multiplied by one is gonna be a slightly lower number, et cetera. Okay, so I've got that set up to go into my Snipe Hunt Geo database. I'm going to call this Soils, rename this to Soils, and say OK. Now, when this pops up, you're going to have three different unit codes here. You're going to have anything that falls under X anything that falls under T and anything that falls under Q. If we open that attribute table, we can look at that and see that the value is zero for Q, one for T and two for Q. So we have reclassified all of those geologic units into zeros, ones and twos. Now the idea here is that we have taken the Archean geology and decided that it is not actually ideal habitat. So you can set that color to null so that you don't see it. And we'll be looking only at, if I remove the geology that I started with, we'll be only looking at the tertiary and quaternary areas that are ideal habitat for these snipe. The next step, we want to address the elevations that they live and breed at. So let's bring that DEM in. We're gonna keep soils, but get rid of everything except soils and the DEM. We wanna reclassify this DEM to above and below 1800 meters. So let's go back in Arc Toolbox and this time reclassify, we're gonna do a little bit differently. Again, reclassify is under spatial analyst tools under reclass. So our input raster is the DEM this time. The value is the only option for choosing what your values are. And notice it's trying to split this into nine different categories. This time, instead of assigning numbers, we want to split this or classify it into two different groups. One is above and one is below 1800 meters. So if you click on this button, classify, we're going to set the number of classes to two. And we're going to come over here to the break values on the right and set our break value to 1800. 
So what this has done is it's split all of our data into below 1800 and above 1800. We're only interested in those areas below 1800. So you can say, okay, those areas that are below 1800 can stay one and the areas that are above 1800 should be set to zero. So what we're doing is we're splitting this DEM into the number one below 1800 and the number zero above 1800. So when we do a mathematical multiplication, this is going to remove anything or anything that, that falls above 1800 is gonna be classed out as zero. So we'll call this elevation and say, okay. Now as that's running, I'm gonna remove my DEM. I no longer have any use for my DEM in this map. But what I've got here now is I've got zero for the Archean, zero for the elevation that's above 1800, I've got one for the tertiary and I've got two for the quaternary and I've got one for the areas that are um, below 1800. So if we're looking at this in color, I'm gonna take this zero value for the elevation and set the color to null. Can't really overlap these two terribly well, but now we've got green, blue, and another green here are the areas that we want. That DEM. All right, so our next step is to look at the habitat that they like to hang out in. Our snipe like to spend their time in cultivated crops and pastures. So let's bring in the land use. If we bring that in, it's gonna give us a warning here that says the um, coordinate systems don't match, but that's all right. We don't need to worry about that right now. So I've got my land use here. It comes in with a list of different property types, and you'll see we've got hay pasture and cultivated crops in the list. We want to again reclassify this so that hay and pasture are number one and two based on the quality of the crops the snipes like, and the rest is set to zero because it doesn't meet the habitat criteria. So back in our toolbox, we're going to go in and reclassify one more time. Reclassify the land use. The reclass value should be set to land cover, and you'll see those different items in there. So set everything to zero that is not cultivated crops or hay and pasture. We're going to set hay and pasture to number two because it's really the ideal habitat, and we're going to set cultivated crops to one. Say it's good enough, they'll live there, but it's not their favorite. So everything else is set to zero except hay and pasture, which is two, and cultivated crops is one. We'll call this land or, or cropland and say OK. So now again, I'm done with land use. I can remove that from my map. I have picked out the three different habitats that meet or don't meet my criteria based on what I've set forward. This long list of habitat that doesn't meet the criteria showing up in blue on my map, I'm going to remove that and make that color null because I'm not interested in it right now. We could, if we were working in shape files, just delete these from the map, but since we're in rasters, we're just going to leave them in there and our end goal is to multiply these all together for a single raster at the end anyway, so there's no point in doing that. So I'm going to turn on all of my files. We can see where everything overlaps, that's the area we're most interested in. Okay, so the next step we want to take, we're interested in finding areas that are not close to the highways. So go ahead and bring highways into your map. We're going to say that these highways are too busy for the birds, they're too shy, they don't like to be around road noise. So we're going to classify our distance from the road. Now we could run a simple buffer but that's no fun and it doesn't let me show you a brand new tool. Go into our toolbox, collapse reclass, and we're going to go into, under spatial analyst, we're going to go into distance, expand the distance toolbox, and we're looking at Euclidean distance. Open that tool up. Now there's another tool in the toolbox called Euclidean direction, if you run the Euclidean distance tool, you have the option of doing the direction as well here, the output direction raster that says it's optional. We're gonna run that so you can see both of those tools at once. Our input raster is 
our highways. We're going to call this distance. We don't need to set up a barrier, but if you had some sort of barrier in here, you had a, um, a shape file or something that was blocking anything that you wanted to sort of end the, the, um, the distance from, or if you want to set a maximum distance, say we only want to go so far. In this case, we want to go as far away from the roads as possible because the idea is to get away from it. So we're not going to set a maximum distance. We want to again set our output cell size to 30 because we want all of our, our cells to be 30 by 30 meters. We'll leave the distance method and let's go ahead and create that direction raster. Just by giving it a name, we'll create that direction. So just call it direction. And we can take a look at both of those because they're both going to pop into our map and say OK. Here they come. OK, so I'm going to start with direction. It's kind of wild looking, but what we've got here is a continuous raster, meaning every single cell in this raster has a value. And it's based on 0 to 360 degrees what the nearest road is. So if you take your info button, hover in here, you can click anywhere, and it'll tell you 22 degrees to the nearest road, anywhere you are. In this case, it's 90 degrees to the nearest road. All of this is based on the direction to the closest road. So we're not actually going to use direction. I just wanted you to see this tool. We can remove that. What we are looking at is distance. So this may look like a buffer, but again, this is a continuous raster where every single cell in this raster has a value based on the distance from the roads. Now notice it goes from zero to 39,000 something. Everywhere you click on here, if you use the info button, it'll tell you the distance to the nearest road. So it looks like multiple layers of buffers, but it, that's just the way it's displaying the symbology. We can go and change the symbology to make it continuous or stretched so that you can see that that is actually a continuous. Oh. I clicked too fast, it canceled it out. So you can see that that's actually a continuous raster. So what we're interested in here, now we have the distance. We want to set anything that's too close to the road to zero, and we want to set anything that's far away from the road as an area that the snipe might, might actually inhabit. So again, we're going to reclass one more time. Back in Spatial Analyst, reclass toolbox, reclassify. We want to reclassify our distance. The only option is that value field. We want to classify that. So click on that classify button. And once again, we're going to set this to two different break, two different values. And our break value, let's set our break value to, oh, what have I used? Well, let's go with 1800 again. So we'll set our break value to 1800. That's what we're going to end up saying here is that anything that's above 1800 is viable habitat. Anything below 1800, there's too much road noise and they will not hang out there. So we've classified that into below 1800 and above 1800. We want to set below 1800, our new value is zero. And 1800 to 39,000, our new value is one. And we're going to set that to safe distance. Call that distance for the birds and say OK to run that tool. So I'm done with the distance file. I'm going to remove that from my map just to keep everything clean. Now you see we've got the safe distance. We've got the zeros and the ones for the raster. I'm going to once again set the zero to no color. And this is just for display purposes. You can see anything that's showing through there is not going to meet that, that criteria of being habitable for the snipe. I should actually point out once again, there are a million ways to do everything in GIS. So I'm going to put that distance raster back into the map and show you one other way to do this. It's asking me if I want to build pyramids. Yes, I want to build pyramids. It just makes my map draw faster. So if I put that distance back in there, there is another tool you can use other than reclassify. 
you can go into raster math this math column here lets you do all sorts of mathematical functions actually i'm going to use the raster calculator let's use the raster calculator and say distance greater than or equal to 1800 and i want to make that out output raster distance ras so you can see that it's the same thing we'll call that distance ras again remove my distance raster from the map so we've got safe distance we'll compare that to distance rast looks exactly the same to me other than color of course so two different ways to run that calculation once you've got that distance raster i'm going to keep the safe distance because we've got that reclassified to zero and one that's what we're interested in which is effectively what that safe distance raster was it removed anything that was zero but now i want to use the raster calculator because i have four different files that I want to multiply together and I want to multiply them instead of adding them because I want that zero to remove anything that doesn't meet my criteria. Remember, I've got four criteria, distance from the road, type of land, type of soil, and elevation. So I've created these four rasters that are all zeros, ones, and twos. I'm gonna use my raster calculator and say, multiply safe distance times cropland times soils times elevation. I'm going to call this my snipe habitat or snipe pad because I don't want to make my title too long or it won't read it. Say okay. Now I've multiplied those together. I'm going to remove from the map all of the four because I don't need them anymore. Now I've got a fairly colorful map that's classified 0, 1, 2, and 4. So, four is, of course, my ideal habitat. Two is good, one is okay, and zero is non viable habitat. So, I'm going to remove zero, make that no color. Now I can see the various areas that meet my four criteria. So, the next step is if we're going hunting, we need to know whether or not we have land access. Okay? So, bring your cadastral data into this map Gallatin cadastral. We'll put that in. Don't need to worry about whether or not it's in the same coordinate system. So we're looking for public land in the Gallatin Cadastral. Let's open the attribute table. We're going to take a look at the owner names here. We can go ahead and safely assume that anything that's owned by the state is um, viable land. So let's do a select by attributes. And we want to do owner name like state so single open um, apostrophe we're going to put a percentage sign in front because we don't know where the name state is we're going to put state in all caps because everything in the owner name is a capitalized we're going to put a percentage sign at the end too and then close that quotation hit apply now just looking at this it picked up 469 of the 38,000 um, sites in here. Let's take a look at what pulls up. So I'm going to go to just the selected items and look at what we got. There are going to be some files or some locations that don't meet the criteria. We've got state of Montana, we've got United States of America, but we've also got Wiley Creek Estates. We've got Free State Building Condo Master. So by no means do I recommend actually doing this without processing through your data further, but for the purposes of this exercise, we'll go ahead and pretend that all of these are state lands that you, you can hunt on. So what we wanna do, we've got those selected. We wanna export that data as a brand new shapefile. We'll call that public land. and add it to the map. So I am done with my cadastral. I'm going to remove that. Now I have public lands or places that I can hunt that overlap my snipe habitat. What I want to do is either do a raster clip that clips out these various areas from the raster that happen to fall in the public land, or we can convert the snipe habitat we can convert that into a shapefile and we can do a select by location. 
I prefer the method of converting it to a shape file because if we just do the raster clip, we're going to include these areas that fall in the zero category. I want to be able to delete those. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and convert this raster back into a shape file. Back up under conversion tools. This time we're going from raster to raster to polygon. So converting our snipe habitat by value, not object ID, into a, a polygon, we're going to call this habitat. And we don't need to adjust anything else. We'll just, we can leave simplify polygons. I think I pointed out last time what that's going to do is kind of round the edges on these square cells. We don't need to use a multi height feature. And we don't care about how many vertices create the feature. We just say OK. All right, so now we've got our snipe habitat is a uh, shape file now. I'm going to remove the raster, so I'm only looking at the shape file. Now, if I open the attribute table, I can look at the grid code, and anything that's a zero, I can remove. So I'm going to select by attributes, grid code equals zero. OK. And I forgot to start editing, so I'm going to start turn editor on. Now, if that loses your selection, you'll have to run it again, but it didn't lose the selection. I'm going to just go ahead and delete that. Now I only have grid codes one, two, and four. So if I stop editor, say yes. Now I have a habitat that is only the habitat that meets the snipes criteria. Refresh my map, so that'll show up. So I just hit refresh to get rid of those zeros in the image. Now what I can do is select by location features from habitat that intersect public land and say apply. OK. Now if I export those, I am looking at hunting grounds. I want to add that to my map. If I turn everything else off, I'm going to leave the highways on so we can see how to access it and where they are. These are the areas that meet the criteria for snipe habitat. If we classify this hunting grounds, go into the symbology and look at the categories, we're going to add all of the values based on the grid code and set a color ramp on it. We'll do green to, green to red, just add all values. We've got one, two, and four. The red areas are the poorest habitat, the yellow areas are fair habitat, and the green areas are the best habitat. So the green areas are where you want to go hunting. They're on public land and they are the ideal habitat for a snipe. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. Um, I'm available and uh, I guess that's all I have for you today.